Now moving on to the defenses. We have, I mean, guaranteed production. You have the Chicago Bears on the top of the list. I mean, they struggled last year overall. They did, but in the second half, they really came around. It's all about the system. I love that Tampa 2. I love the defensive line. They're, they're really deep at every position, and mm -hmm. Devin Hester in most leagues, the touchdowns he scores count for you. So I still like them at the very top with the San Diego Chargers. So the Bears will be a better value. Mm -hmm. And the Minnesota Vikings went first in your draft, actually, in they turnovers did. and sacks with the addition of Jared Allen. And they'll be great, and so will the Chargers. I'm just not into taking a defense in the ninth or 10th round. Oh, I think I'd rather take running backs, and that's when these teams are going to go. So I'd rather wait and take a team like the Bears or the Colts, something like that a little later. Mm -hmm. And I uh, wanted to talk real quick about sleepers for um, for the defenses. We have, you know, I, I like the, well, the Colts are definitely always, they, last year they really established themselves with the help of Bob Sanders being a huge difference and being defensive player of the year. Because when he's on that field, they they are just a top five defense. There's no that question. That system always creates turnovers. Mm -hmm. And people still think of them as a great offensive team. They're now a great defensive team. So that's why I had them a, as a sleeper. Well, and that shows how great of a coach Tony Dungy is. They kind of rotate in new guys every year. You're not sure who these guys are, but whoever they put in usually works out pretty well. Mm -hmm. It was a great uh, thing for Dungy to turn it back around. And Seattle. Seattle's very unsung. Ooh. I mean, they're probably my favorite sleeper. They have steadily built up their team year after year on the defensive side to where now I think they're one of the best defensive teams in the NFC, and they're they're not that good on offense. <laughs> so it, it's different. They've kind of flipped it around. So much talent on their defensive line, very deep. Oh, they yeah. can come at you with a lot of guys. Uh, their linebackers are as good as there are in the whole league. Yeah, Peterson, uh, Tupo. Peterson, Tupo, and Leroy Hill, mm -hmm. who people tell me is just as good as those other two. So. Right, right. And then Rocky Bernard, very underrated defensive but Very tackle. solid up. Top to bottom, and they get to play the 49ers and the Rams, uh, and I think that's good for matchups a, a year. Wow, and then for the bus, we had the Pittsburgh Steelers and Jacksonville Jaguars, who've been, you know, who've had great defensive units for years, but looks like they could take a fall. It's tough to call defenses bus. I think these guys just, I, I wouldn't draft them. I think their reputation is a little bit better than their personnel right now, so they're just a mediocre, mediocre teams to me. They're kind of either. They don't really ha know what to put their hats on right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And th and th and that was the the difference, like in those uh, playoff in that playoff game, especially yeah, Pittsburgh now more of a aerial type of right. offense. Right when they played each other, actually, it's yeah. a good point. It was thirty two twenty nine. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, the, and the Steelers late in the year were getting just cream. The Jaguars, I know, it was the Patriots, but they didn't stop the Patriots once, and mm -hmm. th they're just not the elite defenses they used to be. Now the rookie rankings, very interesting. Now we talked about Jonathan Stewart, Darren McFadden, Matt Forte, Tulane guy. <laughs> Thank God, we, I can't believe I took this long to mention. <laughs> wave, Matt Forte, I know he's playing on the Bears, so that, that's a problem. But I'll say this, if you're setting odds on who will lead all rookie running backs in touches, I think Matt Forte has a pretty good chance mm -hmm. to have more than Stewart uh, more than McFadden. In fantasy football, you know, you don't have to be racking up big yardage per carry. You just need to get those 300 carries. Forte's got a shot. That's why he's a nice mid-round pick. Mm, that's for sure. And, and also Ray Rice, uh, the way McGahee, McGahee's kind of, uh, you know, not taking care of business in training camp. And Ray Rice is just, you know, working hard and everything. And I know some of his people, his people are saying that Ray is just like sleeping with that playbook. Um, you know, <laughs> and he's getting a lot of hype. I drafted McGahee tonight, and it was because of value. He fell, and I took him at the top of the fourth round. And that, that's a big. That is great to it get. It was either the end of the third. Either way, I was on the turn. I was on the last pick. So I think that was a good value there. Mm, yeah. Now, I really wanted Ray Rice, too, to pair with him, and he didn't quite fall to me. He went in the eighth round. I think I was ready to take him in the ninth, something oh. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a really talented backup, one of the best backups in the league. And there are questions about McGahee's conditioning and how he'll recover, not the hardest worker. Mm -hmm. So that that's a little bit of a concern. I want to congratulate you on all your well-deserved success with rotoworld.com, expanding, and, and also with NBCSports.com. And, and check out Greg Rosenthal on both websites. and uh, Live show every Sunday morning Sunday during, mor during the season with mm -hmm. me and uh, Tiffany Stein. 11 a.m.